Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. Well, everyone was freaking out that Bitcoin price was not rising in the last two months. You guys remember the last two months? I'm sure you don't have that short of a memory. Available BTC was quietly being scooped up, and importantly, without paper BTC printed in its place. So this one coming from Willy Woo here. Uh, last time I will say it, he says, it's only a matter of time before Bitcoin squeezes past its new all-time high, guys. And I'm going to show you the Bitcoin chart in a second. We've been making lots of progress here. Bitcoin inventory on exchanges. So we've got the prices up here. And then as you guys can see the divergence, okay, the inventory versus the price. So we've got the, uh, the total inventory and then the spot inventory is just going down because the supply is being eaten up. And this has been the case for the last two months, coincidentally or not so coincidentally, actually a direct correlation to, uh, you know, the last two months here in crypto. This was uh, mid-March 2024. Now today, if you guys are watching this video on the day that I'm releasing it is May the 22nd. So uh, if you guys look over here, we basically did retrace on the Bitcoin chart here uh, before this move to the upside. And look at what date that is down there, May of the 14th. So pretty much two months, uh, almost exactly two months before we did see this uptick for Bitcoin. And uh, guys, that was in around the same time that we were seeing this accumulation spot and paper Bitcoin getting gobbled up. So uh, now Bitcoin is flirting with this level up here, guys, basically flirting with all time high. Uh, I know this isn't all time high, but uh, we are seeing significant resistance here in and around $71,000 for BTC. Uh, I'm going to throw it on the one hour just so you guys get a better idea of what I'm looking at. Actually, you know what? I'm going to throw it on the four hour just so I can zoom in here and see a little bit more on the chart. So at this peak here, this was pretty much the retracement after we did see all-time high. Bitcoin did retrace, tried to make its way back up past that all-time high, but couldn't quite get there. And then uh, we moved down further, and now we're retesting that level. So uh, in and around here, guys, we're going to see, we, we might see some more of this before Bitcoin breaks through. But as per Willy Woo, there is only so much time left before Bitcoin does break through and make some new all-time highs. Let's bring up XRP here on the chart. XRP right now uh, doing okay. We're seeing XRP trading today in and around 53 and a half cents. So uh, we did go up as high as 55.7 yesterday morning, but now we have retraced. Of course, XRP is just following Bitcoin on the charts. We are seeing greed is receding a little bit, 68 for the greed category. So now we're no longer in the 70s, but guys, that's going to heat up once again. We've got market cap $2.6 trillion. So we're still climbing up here, 24 hour volume. That is down a little bit. So we're seeing, uh, you know, a lot of the trading activity we were seeing yesterday has died off and Bitcoin dominance has gone down to 53.2%. So just when it comes to that uh, activity dying off, you guys can see it here in the prices. We are still uh, predominantly in the green though. There are some altcoins in the red, uh, but that is just basically because you know, the money is just shifting around at this point. People, investors, retail, they're wondering where their best bet is at this point. If you guys want to get some ideas and see what I'm trading this bull run, there are still some pretty decent altcoin discounts to be had. Uh, you guys can follow me at patreon.com slash working money channel if you want to see the $15,000 plus portfolio. So yeah, it's it, it grew quite a bit over the last several months. I can't stop, guys. When I see good prices, I just pile in. Anyway, patreon.com slash working money channel if you guys are uh, interested in, uh, you know, some of these cryptocurrencies, because qu quite frankly, some of these are going to do better than others. And, uh, you know, this time I'm looking at different metrics, not just focusing on real world utility, which was my big mistake last time I did have uh, the lion's share in XRP, which was fine. I mean, I love XRP and I am uh, planning a different cash out strategy this bull run for not just XRP, but all my other altcoins. Anyway, the details will be there. Even Rect Capital noticing, you know, a weekly candlestick above 71,005 would probably kickstart a breakout from the reaccumulation range. However, history suggests Bitcoin should consolidate inside this reaccumulation range for several more weeks. Extended consolidation here would get Bitcoin closer to resynchronizing with the historical halving cycle. So that's the other thing. Historically, we, um, you know, because we did see Bitcoin breach its all time high uh, before the halving, this cycle is a little off kilter. Um, and so we could see some more reaccumulation as Rect Capital is suggesting here. So basically not getting above this, uh, this all time high level, not quite yet. Uh, or sorry, this is the XRP chart, but uh, I think you guys know what I mean. Getting past this all time high, not quite yet. We could reconsolidate here for a little while longer, and that would get us uh, kind of closer to where we should be. I mean, should be in quotes. Uh, he does post the chart down here. So reaccumulation, possibly 
still occurring. Although, you know, I'm getting excited. I'm hoping that the reaccumulation has already happened and that uh, we will breach all time highs. I think ultimately, if we do breach all time highs sooner rather than later, though, um, we stand to see a much higher Bitcoin price during this bull cycle. So uh, anyway, some good observations here from Rect Capital too. Guys, I also noticed this Ripple partner or rather one of their original VC funders, Standard Charter, is now expecting the SEC to approve a spot Ethereum ETF. So uh, they are also now saying, okay, the landscape is ripe for this to happen. Standard Charter, they revised their forecast and now expects the US SEC to approve a spot Ethereum exchange traded fund this week with the bank's head of digital asset research expressing 80% to 90% confidence. Wow, that's actually pretty big. He estimates potential inflows of uh, $15 billion to $45 billion to enter Ethereum within the first year of approval. Markets are closely watching the SEC's decision with the first deadlines falling on May the 23rd and 24th. So that is tomorrow and the following day, respectively. Standard Charter also forecasts Ethereum could reach $8,000 if Bitcoin does go to $150,000 by the year's end. So by the year's end, it's kind of a um, arbitrary target, I think, for Bitcoin. I mean, you know, if we are to follow former cycles, we know this bull run is going to go into 2025. So uh, at $150,000 per Bitcoin, here, let me just throw Fibonacci on here. We are now flirting with the all-time high. Did come right back down to the 0.786, as you guys can see there. But uh, $150,000, that would bring us... Up to the 2.618, just over the 2.618, actually, that would bring us to $156,000 roughly for BTC. So at this point in the game, I feel like, you know, we're kind of nearing the end of the cycle. Nevertheless, we got to keep our eyes peeled and be ready to make decisions to pull the trigger when that occurs. Again, for more information on what I'm going to be doing, when I'm going to be pulling the trigger, these are all the concepts, guys, that I'm going to be taking into account over there at patreon.com slash working money channel. You get one kick at the can. DFTU, as our will pal says. So it is only $5 a month again, if you guys are interested. With regards to this Ethereum ETF, though, I think that that could change things. And uh, I think that maybe these guys are onto something because they have noticed Van Eck was actually just listed on the DTCC with a ticker symbol, Van Eck Ethereum TRSHS. Uh, and so the, uh, the ticker symbol there is ETHV. So Ethereum ETFs in the wings already been listed on the DTCC's website. Guys, another piece of huge news here. Donald Trump is now officially, he's saying now he's accepting crypto and uh, has put it on his website. Now accepting cryptocurrencies including XRP, baby. That's right, kicking it into high gear. Here's just a snapshot of uh, Donald Trump's website there. Um, but kicking it into high gear, Trump campaign starts taking cryptocurrency donations. We heard uh, Donald Trump just the other week saying that he was going to uh, that he was going to accept them. And now he has made good on his promise. The Trump campaign announced Tuesday that it will start accepting cryptocurrency donations, casting the move as one of solidarity with opponents of the socialistic government control over the U.S. financial markets. This is being put out by CNBC, too. Uh, notice how they put it in quotes. Supporter of former President Donald Trump can donate using any cryptocurrency accepted through the Coinbase Commerce product. This is what his campaign said. And uh, now because he's doing this, Joe Biden's campaign is asking for donations, saying cryptocurrency executives backing Donald Trump are outraising them. Yeah, go figure. <laughs> Earlier today, Trump started accepting Bitcoin and crypto for campaign donations. And now Joe Biden has to do the same. Keeping up with the Joneses, folks. This couldn't be any more serious. Cryptocurrency executives and oil barons are coming out of the woodwork for Trump. They're rushing $800,000 checks at glitzy events. Now Trump is out raising us. He raked in a total of $76 million in April, over $50 million of it coming from a single gala in Palm Beach. Uh, so now it looks as though the uh, the Biden campaign is under pressure. The announcement ties President Joe Biden, who is running for re-election against Trump with Elizabeth Warren, a vocal critic, uh, vocal cryptic, cri a crypto critic, excuse me, who has pushed to clamp down on the nascent industry. Let me just go down here. Uh, this move opens a new source of potential funds for the Trump campaign, which still lags Biden in cash on hand, even as it outraised the Democratic incumbent in April. Crypto donations will be reported as in-kind contributions, my, uh, much like gifts of stock. The campaign can then decide to either liquidate the digital currency or hang on to it. So that is uh, that is now what is happening uh, over there at the Trump campaign. You can donate cryptocurrency now. 
to Donald Trump if you so choose. Anders here commenting on the matter. Look what happened shortly after Trump publicized, stated he is pro-crypto. Now Democrats are scrambling. Democrats and regulators in the U.S. all of a sudden appear a lot more pro-crypto. I bet they realized it might cause them the upcoming election with their anti-crypto stance. A large percentage of Americans do own crypto. Add in the embarrassing losses for the SEC and the courts, especially their loss against Ripple. Add in the fact that major jurisdictions around the world are implementing clear crypto regulations, especially the EU, which have clear regulations coming into force in 2024. Will be very interesting to see the results for the Fit 21 bill, which will be up for vote in House this week, guys. This bill will provide U.S. with clear crypto regulations. And so uh, Cooper Dog Dad here also just posting this, uh, this screen grab, this uh, collage, I guess from a bearable guy from his Ripple Reddit, focusing on regulations here. Lodestar also commenting on regulations. The molasses is also, uh, you know, the it moves slowly. The regulations move slowly. And now we have the FIT Act. Yes, 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 yes. If you guys didn't catch that video, I will link it up here in the top right-hand corner regarding bearable guy and the FIT Act. So wanted to thank Anders for posting that. Stuart Alderati also commenting, Gary Gensler has overplayed his hand. He thought crypto was an easy target. He relished being the guy that everyone loved to hate. He thought he was above congressional oversight. And now that's all gone. Now he's a struggling political liability, no doubt. He was retweeting out Chris Brummer's tweet. This is the first time the SEC has become the subject of presidential politics. So Chris, uh, noticing this, I don't recall ever uh, a presidential candidate mentioning the chair of the SEC by name. I also don't remember a sitting president threatening preemptively to veto congressional legislation about the SEC. It is getting spicy. Uh, and, uh, you know, I guess it's just really a matter of time before we really see these elections heat up. It's already May, and I don't feel like I've seen uh, too much in the way of elections. I feel like they are uh, purposely not giving it uh, as much coverage as I, th I think as we've seen in the past for U.S. elections uh, moving into this because they kind of can maybe predict where the outcome is going to go. Anyway, they don't want to poke the beast, I guess. <laughs> Bill Morgan here also posting this uh, with regards to the new, uh, well, the latest update in the courts with regards to cryptocurrency and the Uniswap case. What is interesting is that Uniswap felt the need to argue that airdrops are not investment contracts. The SEC must have referred to airdrops in the Wells notice. Imagine stretching the first prong of the Howey test to the point where you say a free airdrop is an investment of money. Uniswap compares analogously its airdrops to early Ripple giveaways. The SEC initially argued uh, in the Ripple case that these giveaways were investment contracts, but abandoned this position in the summary judgment motion. The fact that the SEC dropped the, uh, the XRP giveaways was a sign to me that the SEC always knew the token itself was not a security. Uh, so this coming from one of our XRP lawyers, Bill Morgan here, and now, uh, you know, the same kind of thing is happening to Uniswap in the court case. The retroactive airdrop to historical users of the protocol, which occurred in September 2020, did not involve any investment of money. Notably, in the Ripple case, the commission at first asserted that an initial distribution of XRP through giveaways to early adopters, developers, and programmers for which the company received no compensation could still be considered an investment of money if the would-be gifts may be characterized as subterfuge to evade registration. So um, this is now... They're, they're using the Ripple case as precedent here to move forth and uh, really kind of secure their position to safeguard the, uh, well, the former airdrops, but also hopefully airdrops moving forward. So um, anyway, wanted to thank Bill for posting that. Where are we in the case, guys? Remember Bearable Guy's tweet from just the other day? If you guys didn't catch that video, I will link the most recent Bearable Guy video up here in the top right-hand corner that I just did yesterday. But Bearable Guy did say patience and perseverance have a magical effect before with difficulties disappear and obstacles vanish. So where are we in the case? Here's one courtesy of XRP Drops. J.W. Verrett with James Murphy, a.k.a. Metal Law Man. This is where we stand, guys. Listen to this. Is when, oh, when is this going to be over? So do you have any thoughts? You know, it's fully submitted on this question of damages, which in my view is far, far, far simpler than massive you know, summary judgment cross motions with, you know, thousands and thousands of pages. This is pretty much a legal issue. How, how are you thinking about when people should expect to hear from Judge Torres on on the uh, remedies? It seems like we're close to the end of the district case. Um, we're not. This is only the. This is this is this is uh, only the uh, beginning of the end. This is the end of the beginning. Because we got to go to the 
uh, appeals court, and then we've got to go to the Supreme Court, I think, ultimately for resolution of the questions here. So next, unfortunately, the appeals court, and then finally the Supreme Court. I hate how he said it that way, the end of the beginning, uh, because there is still more to go here. Nevertheless, it is a lengthy process. The court system is uh, definitely not a system that uh, I would want to be mired in. But for crypto adoption to really take hold in the U.S. and for, uh, you know, us to see these true valuations come to fruition, we do have to, uh, you know, see this regulated market because the institutional money just won't come in otherwise, guys. And that's where we're going to see these real price appreciations occur. I mean, we can only get so high in a spec run. And this is why I'm planning accordingly for all my cryptocurrencies, my uh, $15,000 plus portfolio and my legacy coins, including XRP. But it is still a moving target. So uh, we do have to keep our eye on the prize. Uh, so I wanted to thank XRP Drops for posting that, guys. Two Ripple partners, Alfardan Exchange and Ria Money, will expand their relationship. This one courtesy of Wrath of Kahneman here. These partners are expanding, guys. Alfardan Exchange, the leading money transfer and currency exchange firm, which is licensed and regulated by the Central Bank of the UAE, strengthened their partnership with Ria Money Transfer. Ria, a global leader in cross-border money transfer industry and business segment of Euronet worldwide. This collaboration elevates the inward remittance experience, leveraging Ria's 583 3,000 locations in nearly 200 countries and territories worldwide. So that is huge. The fact that RIA uh, does have this many physical locations where people can go in uh, in 200 different countries and make uh, cross-border money transfers. Of course, RIA is a Ripple partner. Catering to inward remittance requirements, the upgraded customer service now offers cash payouts via RIA. This enables RIA customers to conveniently access incoming funds through Alfardan Exchange's extensive branch network across the UAE. So in the United Arab Emirates, uh, XRP utility is thriving alive and well. Through this mutual dedication to improve customer experience, this collaboration not only streamlines inward remittance processes, but also extends its benefits to a broader range of customers. So some huge benefits there for cross-remittance customers in the UAE, leveraging two Ripple partners now, Alfardan Exchange and Ria Money. Guys, the web keeps growing. Wanted to thank the Wrath of Kahneman just for mentioning that. Stuart Alarati here also uh, with this. Another uh, interesting observation with Fit21 coming up for vote this week. A reminder that the House GOP had the foresight in 2023 to publish a fact sheet that cited the Ripple decision XRP in and of itself is not a security to debunk the SEC's myth that all digital assets were securities. I wanted to just bring this up to you guys. This is now uh, with regards to Fit21 because this is being voted on this week. And this is from, uh, if I'm not mistaken, just from last month, I believe. I think this was from last, I think this was from April. But now that we have the framework in place, uh, it is important to note the XRP decision in July of 2023 determined that XRP was only part of an investment contract when offered directly by Ripple to institutional investors. The decision called into question the SEC's position that practically all digital assets are securities. The SEC's policy was rejected by the court, which highlights the need for legislation. So this was uh, put into the uh, the House Committee on Agriculture. So uh, the myth here, they wanted to debunk this. All digital assets other than Bitcoin are securities and should be regulated by the SEC. Obviously, we are now uh, seeing progress in the courts to, uh, you know, to point out that that is just not going to be the case. We did get a, a landmark vote the other day. Then we got the bearable guy Riddle just, uh, you know, kind of reiterating this. So, I mean, it is looking great, guys. It is starting to look great. I guess I shouldn't jump the gun quite yet, but it is starting to look great for crypto regs in the U.S. Not to mention Ripple is also looking to become regulated and wants to be regulated every step of the way. Here is a, a list from XRP Drops. All the trademarks by Ripple since 2014. So Ripple did uh, file their original trademark in 2014. Uh, then Ripple was filed in 2017. Then the Triskelion also in 2017. RippleNet 2017. You guys can see all this. As the years went on, there were more trademarks filed. And then some of these products were rebranded eventually. The Spring Initiative, you guys remember that? That was 2018. Runs on Ripple was also 2018. On Demand Liquidity was 2020. Uh, Pay ID was also 2020. Block Stars, Ripple X, uh, Ripple Impact, PayString. Ripple Liquidity Hub, that was finally in 2021. Crypto means business. I didn't know they actually trademarked that slogan. That was 2022. And now, guys, in 2024, Ripple USD or the RLUSD. So uh, here's just a, a quick video just scrolling through some of those trademarks here. And you guys can see, is it down at the, at the bottom down here? The RLUSD, it looks as though this could be the stablecoin Ripple USD as well over here. So giving the uh, the stablecoin a couple of names that it can go by. It sounds as though the decision has been made. 
RLUSD is now officially, not so officially, but probably officially the new name of the Ripple stablecoin. And this got me too, guys, from Chad Steingraber here. You gotta be kidding me. Look at the serial number 985 in reverse. That is, yeah, 589. You can't make this stuff up, folks. Great catch, says Stephanie Starr. 589 mystery finally solved. We can all move on now. I think it's much more complicated than that. The good news, guys, we are going to see Ripple introduce this stablecoin soon. And paired with XRP, it is going to change the landscape for payments moving forward, especially payments in the United States. That's just my opinion, but I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.